Today we'll be taking T-notes on blood vessels. The blood vessels belong to a system called the circulatory system. And the circulatory system's function is to transport gases, nutrients, hormones, and waste throughout the body. The major organs in the circulatory system are the heart and the blood vessels. Today we are going to be taking T-notes on blood vessels. You don't have to draw or write this, but I just wanted to show you how the human body is set up and where the blood vessels are located throughout the body. Notice that they do change in sizes as it goes to different parts of the body. And notice also that there is a certain coloration. They could either be red or blue, and we'll discuss that in more detail as we take notes. Blood vessels are a network of hollow tubes that transport blood, nutrients, oxygen, water, and waste. So it is the things that we need as well as the things that we need to get rid of. There are three types of blood vessels, and these are the arteries, the veins, and capillaries. Three categories, and notice how they are arranged in size. So the largest blood vessels are known as arteries. Going down to the smallest kinds of blood vessels we know as capillaries. You do not have to write or draw this, but I do want to show you some cross sections of each of the three kinds of blood vessels. Notice how they are similar in that they are quite cylindrical. One of the biggest things that you might notice is the thickness of the walls of the blood vessel. For the artery, it's the thickest, and the vein is medium, and then the capillary is the thinnest of them all. Notice also that the amount of space in the hollowness, or the lumen here, the vein is the largest in the amount of space that is available in the blood vessel versus the capillary is definitely much smaller. Here is a diagram just to kind of show you one part of the body where you might see all three of the blood vessels interacting together. So here we have some tissue cells, so this could be like maybe muscle or even fat, and then you have the artery that is here, and you also have the vein on the other side, and then there is the capillaries that are connecting the two. And this area of many different capillaries is known as a capillary bed. And so this is what you would see throughout the body. Wherever you see an artery, you'll see a vein, and then these are always connected with capillaries. Let's go ahead and take notes on the arteries, which is the largest of the three kinds of blood vessels. Arteries are made of thick walls of layers of muscle and elastic fibers. It's very thick in comparison to the other blood vessels. The hole, also known as the bowl, or what you saw in the earlier slide called the lumen, is the space available in the blood vessel by which the blood travels. Arteries do not have valves, and valves are just pretty much flaps of tissue that is found inside of the blood vessel that open and close, which controls the direction and flow of the blood throughout the body. Arteries appear red under the skin. So if you were to look at your skin and you see some darker red color blood vessels, these would be your arteries. The function of the arteries is to move oxygenated blood away from the heart to other areas of the body that needs it. So when we breathe in, we're breathing in oxygen, the oxygen transfers into the blood, which is into the arteries, and the arteries transport this blood that has oxygen to the other areas of the body. The blood in the arteries is under high levels of pressure, and this is why we need thick walls of layers of muscle in order to transport blood that is flowing at such a high rate. Veins, on the other hand, are thinner. They consist of thinner walls of layers of muscle and elastic tissue. Their lumen, or their bowl, also their hole, which is the space um, that the blood flows, these are larger than the arteries. Veins do have valves, and they are one-way valves. And remember that a valve is simply flaps of tissue that is located inside the blood vessel, which then controls the amount and the direction of that blood flow. If you were to look at veins underneath the skin, these veins would appear to be blue or possibly a little bit green depending on the color of your skin. The function of veins is to move deoxygenated blood to the heart. It is carrying carbon dioxide. 
and we need this deoxygenated blood to return to the heart in order to pick up more oxygen to return back to the cells and the other portions of the body. Now, the one-way valves, remember how we stated that veins have one-way valves? These are to help the blood to move in the correct direction. It is also important to note that the blood is under lower pressure than that of arteries. Therefore, the walls of the veins don't have to be as thick. It is here where skeletal muscles contracting actually helps to force blood back from the legs up to the heart. So in regards to arteries, when you're flexing and relaxing your muscles, the skeletal muscles have nothing to do with blood going out to the parts of your body from the heart. But with skeletal muscles, it does help to bring blood back from the legs to the heart. If you look down here in this diagram, we can see that these little flaps of tissue inside of the blood vessel, these are opened. And when they're opened, you can see that the blood is able to flow freely. If the flaps are closed, then you have the blood staying in this section and it cannot move until, of course, it's opened. So here is where the skeletal muscles, if they're able to contract and relax, they can help to open and close the valves to help to return the blood back to the heart. So again, what we were saying, this is just a diagram to show how the muscles in the backs of your legs, when you are relaxed, the valves are closed, so you have no movement of blood. Your circulation has kind of slowed down down here. But when this calf muscle would be contracted, it would actually press on this valve, therefore opening and allowing the blood to flow back up to the heart. So this would come into play, for example, if you were sitting for long periods of time and you're not at all using your legs, you would have a pool of blood down here, which is not a good thing. So getting up to move if you're on a long flight on an airplane is very good because then you can get your circulation going back again. Now capillaries is the third category of blood vessels. They are smaller in circumference. They're thin. They're only one cell thick. They have no valves and their lumen, or their bowl, the hole, is very small. When you look at capillaries underneath the skin, they appear to be red, similar to arteries, only smaller. The function of the capillaries is to connect the arteries and the veins. Gas exchange happens within the capillaries. The capillaries can transport in all directions. They can transport blood, which is oxygenated as well as deoxygenated. They can transport oxygen nutrients, hormones, and these are flowing from the blood to the tissues. It can also help to transport waste that flows into the capillaries and then eventually gets expelled through various other means such as the lung or the skin. So here is a diagram where we have the capillary bed connecting the arteries as well as the veins. And what you can see here is some of the oxygenated blood is going into the capillaries and you can also see here that the deoxygenated blood is going into the veins. So remember that the capillaries are connected to tissue. So if you were to have oxygen go into the tissue and get used and now you have to transport carbon dioxide, that carbon dioxide would go into the capillaries and transport itself into the vein which could then go back to the lungs to be expelled as waste. This is just another diagram to show the connection between the capillaries and the lungs. This is one of the alveoli, which is in the lungs, and remember that the lungs are, these, are filled with these little sacs that obtain oxygen, and they give that oxygen through the passage of the thin cells, and it enters into the capillaries to go to the arteries and then on to the other tissues that need it. This is also where the capillaries discard their carbon dioxide and then gets expelled through the lungs. This is the end of our video T-notes. Review the video if you're a little confused about any parts. Be sure you understand everything and are ready to use this in class next. Have a great day.